Hey everyone, Andy here. I'm at the Teradek booth at NBA 2012. I'm here with Nicole, the uh, owner, CEO, and Chief mastermind, troublemaker. chief troublemaker behind uh, Teradek uh, and their cube system and all the other crazy things like the bond and the case and everything else. Um, but today we're going to go over just the uh, the new product, one of the new updates to the cube, uh, and also integration with the Area Alexa. Some really cool stuff happening okay. here. So, so, so Nicole, tell us a little bit about it. Sure. So you probably know the cube is a camera mount encoder, right? So it's a wireless video system, but it's not just a point-to-point -point wireless video system. It compresses at H.264, and then it sends it over IP. It's got its own built-in wireless network. It's a, it's a full-blown access point. So it creates a wireless network, and then you join that wireless network from a device like the iPad or a MacBook, or you can actually take that signal, and you can even send it over the internet. So it's a, it's a great connectivity tool. You can use it on set, but you can also actually use it when you have, say, a, a multi-unit shoot where the B unit is, up, is, is shooting at a different location and you want to send the video back to the A unit so that the director can see it or the studio is in one location but uh, they're shooting in another location, right? So some changes that we made for 2012, it's basically the exact same size as before, but the cube now has a built-in LCD so that you can easily configure it. It's got two little joystick buttons here, so you can go through all the menus and configure it right from the LCD, which is which makes the workflow a lot easier. So before we use like an interface, a iPad or a web interface to do this, and now we can do it on the side. Is that exactly. right? Exactly. Before we ha you had to use either a smartphone or iPad or a laptop or something like that, and a, and a web page on the cube to configure it. Now you just configure it on the LCD. It's nice. it's quite simple. Um, we also have a built-in rechargeable lithium-ion battery. So I can go ahead and unplug the power here and you'll see that the unit still runs. This is going to give you about two hours of connectivity. And it's still the same very wide range of, of voltage inputs, 6 to 28 volts. So if you have a giant Anton Bauer pack or you have a small Canon 5D battery, both of them will, will power the cube. Um, we, we now have a, a micro USB connector to charge that battery as well. So a normal cell phone charger will be able to charge the cube. And we also added a, a micro SD card slot, so the cube can now actually record the proxies on board, and then after it's recorded it, it can just copy it across using other NFS or, in, or FTP, depending on if it's on, in a local network or over the internet. So, so it's a proxy maker, it was always making proxies before, but now you're actually recording those proxies. You're recording it right on the cube itself, so if your if uh, wireless system if the range or something is out of range or the signal drops out for whatever reason, you're not going to lose a single byte of the file because it's, you know, it can just retry and uh, it's now stored the file, it can retransmit it. And you can download that via FTP or NFS as you're saying. That's exactly, and it will actually push it out automatically. You don't have to download it. At what, the moment it stops recording, it'll ask you, should I copy the file across? And you just say yes, and you can automate it. It will just go by itself. So that will integrate with the case which is our video assist system in a box, which runs LightEye Digital's live play system, so you can do all the fancy metadata management from the iPad and stuff like that. And another new feature that we added, it's a software feature. Um, one quick update on the Wi-Fi still. The, um, the Wi-Fi is now multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO. You can see the cube has two antennas, and that increases the range, and it, and it also increases its robustness against interference or anything like that. Um, Another cool new feature that we added is camera control. In this case, we're showing how from the iPad, we're wirelessly over Wi-Fi connected to the cube. The cube is connected with Ethernet to the Aria Alexa. Yeah, so this is this is really exciting for us. We're big area dealers, uh, and this this idea of controlling the Alexa remotely is very important. So yeah, this is well. Tell me more. Okay. So what we do is, Ari gave us the the API so that we can control the camera, so we can read all the metadata from the camera over Ethernet and then send it to you over the, the Wi-Fi, and we can also control the camera. Yeah. So for example, I can just on the iPad, you touch and you'll see the brightness of the camera change, and now as I decrease it, you can see it goes darker, so I can Im get immediate feedback of the video um, on the iPad, and you can also see the values change right there on the LCD, you'll see it's extremely responsive, it's very, very quick. Um, and now I can I can go and I can change my change my white balance. Now that's too cold. Let's warm it up a little bit. That looks just right. I can hit record. Now the camera is rolling. And once I'm now I'm I'm actually running right now. I'm recording. And notice that I'm taking the record out feed right. So as you know, there's no metadata. There's no frame lines or anything like that on the record out. But I can still see all of those settings. And I can even go and I can put frame lines on that exactly matches 
the Alexa's frame lines. So you, you, you went and did this. This is your own coding. This is this. our app. It's called Terra Central. It's free. It's in the Apple App Store. You just download it for the iPad. Obviously, you need the cube yeah. for this to work. Um, and I can change all kinds of stuff. And eventually, we, we're just getting started with this. Yeah. Eventually, we'll be able to extract um, stills from the camera as well from the previous clip and then do a picture in picture so that you can do you can do a continuity check for example so while you're getting live video from the camera you can look at a snapshot from the previous thing obviously we get all the metadata f regarding the file names and time codes and all of that stuff um, and we're also working on adding metadata so I can be sitting on the iPad looking at the live video and I can be making notes and that notes is actually fed back and inserted into the camera and stored on the S by S with the footage. Yeah, that's really exciting. The idea of metadata support is, is huge, I think. So, I mean, the, 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 the Alexa has so many functionality, so much functionality already, but I think what you guys are really doing is even growing it. So, so to me, this is a really cool system for many reasons. One, I'm just going to tell you why I think it's cool. Um, one, I have a, a stream on my iPad. That's very right. cool. Two, I'm controlling the camera. And three, I'm making proxies yes. all, all in one piece, all, all one on piece. one box. Right. Very cool. So thank you for this. This is You're great. Very welcome. I really, uh, I really um, am happy. This, this this booth is really great. I did the live streams. I really liked doing that with the livestream.com people. Uh, so thanks for having me and, and, and going over all this. Absolutely. Uh, I really You're very welcome. It. Thank you. Thanks for supporting us. Yeah. Thanks.